Romans chapter number 8, Romans. You'd be amazed the testimonies of some of the uh, great Christian brothers and sisters. They got saved out of the book of Romans. Romans. Martin Luther for one. Romans chapter number 8 and verse number 16. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Father, bless this holy word now. Thy name I pray, man. I was privileged, go ahead and be seated. With, uh, I spent four t five times, I think, with Brother Bob Bevington and went to Holy Land. And then I led one tour over there myself. And uh, I've been over there. Now, Brother Bevington, I think he'd been over there 50 times. I don't remember how many. I mean, he, had, he knew that place, knew it well. And uh, he's a fine man, uh, wonderful inspiration for anybody that knew Brother Bob Bevington. God bless his memory. But uh, one, one of the trips over there to the Holy Land, I began to understand that uh, the time is absolutely different in the places of the world. It's seven hours different in ahead of us in Israel right now, seven hours. And uh, we went to Israel, and then we went to the UK, United Kingdom, went to England, Ireland, Northern Ireland, Wales, and then, of course, Scotland. That makes up the United Kingdom. Southern Ireland is an independent republic. But when we went over there, I sensed in my soul and in my spirit when we went out and toured around the country, especially Stonehenge, I knew that there was a powerful spiritual force going on in that area. Stonehenge was quite a thing. Now, this was back before. They've built a wall, I think, around it now, a fence or something where you can't you can't get in there like you'd like to, but this was, uh, this was some time ago. And I photographed it, Stonehenge. It's quite a thing. To this day, they do not know who built it or what it's for. But uh, of course, every year at the summer solstice, which will be the 21st day of June, they will gather from around the world. They'll come from everywhere to Stonehenge because it is there that they get plugged into their spirits, witches, wizards, new age, it's all over the place, everywhere. And uh, they're big on dates. And so, you know, the solstice of, of uh, June the 21st is when the day's the longest, longest day, and then the next day the day becomes shorter. But I get an email from a lady in Great Britain, United Kingdom, and I just got this from her the other day. And she, here's the last thing she says in her email, and I'm, I'm going to give you this. She says, uh, I will tell my testimony in hope that it may be helpful for someone that can relate and come to the truth. I've spent a lifetime in the New Age movement, so forth and so on. And then the last thing she says in this email is this. I swear you get to where you can't even pull a piece of paper apart. Well, let's try it down here. There, that guy. There we are. Here's what she says. If you want to help someone, anyone, with my testimony, then please do it. And if you ever need more or want to contact me to help others in similar situations, please contact me too. Praise the Lord. And I won't give her name. We'll, we will retain her anonymity, but um, she, uh, she gives this out in hopes that it will help somebody. Now, you may not be here tonight in this house that it helps you a lot, but who knows. But there may be people watching now because we stream this live, folks. This is going all over the world at this very moment. Great Britain's five hours ahead of us. It's 11, whatever it is, 11, 15, 11, 20 in Great Britain. And uh, people stay up to watch this, uh, this live streaming. And that's a lot to be thankful for. Amen. It's reaching people. Yeah. And she says this. She says, I just wanted to send you a message of thanks for all your sermons for loading them online. I became born again last year, and it has been an eye-opening path Amen. into the world of Christianity. We haven't found a suitable church yet because we have found them to celebrate pagan festivals. And so I thought to myself, this is, you know, this is, things ring true. 
She's looking for a church of lack of faith and order. In other words, people that have been saved. She's not out looking for religion. She's looking for someone whose spirit identifies with her spirit. The Bible says in Romans 8, 16, the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we're the children of God. When you were born again, you might not have understood it. There might a lot of things you couldn't explain. But there was a hunger in your soul to be with other people that were born again. You had it in common. You knew it. And you know by talking to someone, if it's just a head full of religion, and I know a bunch of them, folks, just a head full of religion or a heart that's right with God, a heart that loves the Lord. 2 Corinthians 1.12 says, For our rejoicing is this, the testimony of our conscience, that in simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God, we have had our conversation in the world and more abundantly to you word. That's quite a thing, don't you think? Of course, conversation is simply another way of saying way of life, the way we communicate with each other. And it's a wonderful thing. How, how would you like it if there was no church to go to? Wouldn't that be something? We live in a Bible Belt. I know that. And, uh, and a lot of people out tonight, they were mowing their yards and they're on the lake getting drunk and everything else is going on. But I'm here because I want to be here. I want to be around God's people. She says, I'm 46 years old and a registered nurse in the UK. As I say again, the United Kingdom. I came to be born again because I started to wake up to the deception when COVID-19 started. This journey alone is another story. Now, there's a lot going on with COVID-19. That's not for tonight. And there's a lot of different takes on COVID-19. A lot of different conspiracy issues with COVID-19. You have to do the full research into it and come to your own conclusions. It's not a simple thing, believe me. But she says, uh, I came to be born again because I started to wake up to the deception when COVID-19 started. <clears throat> this journey alone is another story. But what it did was wake me up to the darkness of this world and I started to do research into the Freemasons and unfortunately I found Satan before the Lord Jesus Christ. So you see, she made her initial response, initial, uh, uh, initial desire to, to seek something from God. She'd been wakened. There's a lot of people out there that they're not born again, but they, they're waking up. And this is important for you to understand that. You get any idea, you know, I mean, they'll walk into, the first time they walk into the church, they're going to fall on the altar and get saved and everybody shouts. It doesn't always work that way. Sometimes it's a matter of time. It may take months or even years but they're waking up. They're beginning to understand. They're beginning to question and doubt all of the brainwashing that they've received when they were younger. First John 4, 1 says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try them. Try them. Uh, try the spirits. Dokimatzo is the word, Greek word. It means this. It means to prove, to try, examine, scrutinize, put to the proof, tempt. Now, that's a powerful word. What does that mean? That means this. We had a brother come up here from Florida, and he taught in our school. Bill Wright was his name. Some of you might remember Bill Wright. He's a fine man. He pastors a church now down in, uh, down in Florida. And he brought his father-in-law with him, and we met right back here in this classroom. And Bill was going to teach in our school, and he also taught in the institute. And that's where I learned Hebrew and Greek. I learned it from him. And his father-in-law looked at me and he said, uh, he said, Preacher, would you mind giving me your testimony? That didn't make me mad. That didn't make me mad. That made me feel like he's more genuine. If it makes you mad for somebody to ask for your testimony, you're full of religion. Amen. Full of religion. I wanted him to know what happened to me. And I told him, of course, Amen. 1973 when I met God. And it satisfied them. And then, of course, your life also is a witness to what you say with your mouth. But you see, the point is this. They were trying my spirit. They were trying me. Who am I? Who am I? Who are you? You know? You say, well, I go to church. <laughs> well, I drive a car, too, but that doesn't make me a Christian. <laughs> no, 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 no. So the Bible said, hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is, is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, 
whereof you have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. First John. The Apostle John was dealing with the spirit of Antichrist. It's been around 2,000 years. But notice the wording. Notice the wording. I want to read it for you again. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. It's not what it says. Look at your Bible. Is come. So what does that mean? It keeps it present tense always. He is come. He's here. He's forever here, you see. It's not that he had come. He is come. And so what does that mean? It means that the Lord Jesus Christ is God Almighty coming to mankind. That's what it means. You say, well, I don't believe that, preacher. Well, you're probably a good, nice, religious person, highly moral, and, you know, good to your family and all that, pay your bills, but you're not a Christian. You don't know the Lord. You don't know him. Say, why? Because the Lord Jesus Christ is it. He's everything. Amen. It's how a church relates to the Lord Jesus Christ that determines exactly what that church is. In here, it's not about big preachers and big names and big buildings and big accomplishments and all the rest of the stuff people can hang on you. That's not what it's about. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ. If you really know him, you'll never get tired of hearing that name. You never will. She said, I will tell you my testimony and hope it may be helpful for someone that can relate and come to the truth. I have spent a lifetime in the New Age movement. Now, I want to tell you something tonight, folks. The New Age Christ has nothing to do with the Christ of the Bible. Here's what they teach. They teach that an anointing came on a person, did what it did, and then left that person. That it's all about the anointing and not the person. And that, my friend, is the doctrine of the Antichrist. Because when he comes and sits down in the temple of God, it's going to all be about the anointing he received and what he received and what he has done and who he is. The Lord Jesus Christ is what it's about, not the anointing. Now, the in right context, anointing's fine. But the Lord Jesus Christ was not who he was because he was anointed. The Lord Jesus Christ was the second person of the Godhead forever, from everlasting to everlasting. He had no beginning. But that's a problem with these people. He said, she said, I spent a lifetime in the New Age in witchcraft. Did you notice how they conjoin? You notice how they two walk together except they be agreed? If you're in the New Age movement, uh, it's no big deal to turn to witchcraft. The craft, they call it. You say, well, it's just a bunch of pagan nonsense. No, it's not, folks. They can try to conjure up a curse on you. And if you don't know the Lord, that's this brother right over here. That's Tom Berry. He deals with voodoo. And one of the things about voodoo is to place a curse on somebody. Amen. Well, preacher, could they put a curse on me? No, if you've been blessed, you can't be cursed. I've been received in the beloved. You can't curse me. The curse will return on your own head. And no telling, it may have happened, <laughs> who knows? There may be some folks out there that put a curse on me and they're cursed. <laughs> That's right. They conjured up a devil to destroy somebody and that person knows the Lord. That devil cannot cross that bloodline. Amen. The blood of my home, the doorpost and the lintels are covered by the blood of Christ. Amen. There's a masuza right outside the door. What is a masuza? It contains the scripture from Deuteronomy. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one Lord. Symbolically, it's on my house because I know the Lord. Is it on yours? That's a wonderful thing to know. But she said, I spent a lifetime in the New Age and witchcraft, plus a lifetime of fornication, drugs, and alcohol. I've always been able to work and play, so I'm someone that no one would ever expect to have that lifestyle that I had. Now, she's a nurse. She's working in a, a uh, controlled environment. I guess that's about the best way to put it. You know, she can't go staggering in drunk. That won't work. And so she was able to live that kind of lifestyle and continue in it. Somebody out there needs to hear that tonight. I remember one time I was in the, one of these hospitals. I've been in them for so many years. And I overheard a nurse talking to another nurse. And she was bragging about the orgy that they had had just a day or so before. Yeah. You wouldn't think it, would you? You wouldn't think it, but the, she sure did. I'll never forget it. That's why I'm telling you tonight. You don't hear that kind of thing all the time. She didn't know I was listening. I wasn't listening. It was loud enough for me to hear it. And so, you know, I was there. What do you do? And that's what she were doing. She said, I have had abortions. Yes, that's plural. And spent a lifetime just thinking about self. Boy, know anybody like that? 
I was rejected by both parents and grew up in an atheist home with no love. She didn't grow up. She was drug up. My parents divorced when I was nine years old, and my subsequent stepdad was a pervert. Can you imagine how much of that stuff's going on in this country right now? Amen. Stepdads, little children, not a biological father. My stepdad was a pervert. He never touched us, but there was a lot of suggestion, and he always tried to watch us whilst in our bedroom or the bathroom. And there, was, there were windows above the doors, I'd climb up and look through. My childhood is no excuse for my behavior as an adult, but a childhood with no love is certainly something I have struggled with as an adult. You will all your life. I will all of my life struggle with how I grew up. You all know, I've told you a thousand times. My grandfather's born 1878. Jesse James was still robbing banks, and my grandfather raised me. So I go back a long way. So she came up like that. So she didn't have the privileges and she didn't have the good warmth. And that's nothing wrong. That's the way it ought to be. But she didn't have it. And she was denied that. The Bible said in John chapter number 8 and verse number 3, And the scribes and Pharisees brought him a woman taken in adultery. And when they set her in the midst, they said to him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now here's what he said in Matthew 19, 18. He saith unto him, which Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. What's the Lord quoting here? Ten Commandments. You notice he didn't say thou shalt not kill. He interpreted it for you. He said thou shalt do no murder. There's a difference. But here's the point. He quoted the Ten Commandments and said thou shalt not commit adultery. On one hand he said that, on the other he would forgive one who was taken in adultery. What's the difference, preacher? I mean, he preached the law, Ten Commandments, and then turned right around and forgave a woman taken in it. You know, the difference is grace. Amen. That's the difference. Thank God. Amen. You can go in the finest churches in this country and look at some of the best looking people, smell good, walk good, got a lot of money, a lot of money, and they're real religious and this and that. But I'll guarantee you right now, you go and look in their background. And then look at the way they live now, and you'd be surprised. It's nowhere near what you think. But the Bible says in Romans 5, 8, But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He didn't die for good people. He said, I came to seek and save that which was lost. Amen. If all you ever got out of your church is making you good, you're full of religion. You've been cheated. You've been lied to. You should go to the house of God. You don't have to go to the house of God to be saved, but you ought to come to the house of God to hear something about the Lord from his word. And so on a night that I drank and smoked marijuana extensively, for the last time I was possessed by demons. Well, if you're in the New Age movement and witchcraft, you can be possessed by demons. Well, preacher, they don't believe in demons in the big uh, Southern Baptist church I go to or the independent Baptist church I go to. They don't believe in demons. we probably got one to pull it <laughs> for all of them. Let me tell you something. The Lord Jesus Christ believed in them. Amen. Time and time again, he faced them, communicated with them, and they communicated to him. What an arrogant, arrogant crowd to think that they're above Christ who dealt face on with Satan. Amen. Dealt with him. We know who thou art. Thou the Holy One of God. Have you come to torment us before the time? Suffer that we be cast into the swine and not into the abyss or to the deep. And so suffer it to be so. Go into them. And when they went into the swine, what'd they do? They run over the cliff. Swine couldn't handle the demon like a human being can. It's a big difference. So she said this. It's remarkable. She said, I woke up the next day and knew something terrible had happened to me, possessed by demons. I went to sleep that night and was attacked by two demons in spirit. As this was happening, she said, I cried out to the Lord Jesus to save me. Just a simple thing. Remember now, remember, she had already seen something sometime before that. She had been wakened, awakened, and she, been, she began to search in the wrong places. See, that happens to people. She was searching in the wrong place. 
She was awakened. And then she said, I cried out to the Lord Jesus to save me. I don't know what she said. And it's not important what she said. She just cried out. And Lord God be merciful to me a sinner. Save my soul. Whatever you want to say. If it's from your heart and from your soul. God is ready to hear it. And here's what she said. She says, and I felt like a rushing wind come into my heart. Fill it with love. And of course the demons had no chance. <laughs> that same hour I was changed. And it's been permanent. The Bible said in 2 Corinthians chapter number 5 verse 17, Therefore if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. We live in an unbelieving culture, folks. They believe that you're just full of superstition. You're just an old, you're, you're what they call anachronistic. You're touched, you're in the wrong time uh, slot. You ought to be back in time. And we've got past that, you see. We're moving on down the road. No, 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 no. The new birth is as powerful today as it ever has been. And once that new birth takes hold of your soul, you're going to become a new creature in Christ Jesus, and you'll know that you had been deceived. And so she said, I was cleansed. I was saved. There she says, I have never got drunk again. You know, I haven't had one since 1973. That's been quite a while, then. Boy, if it's if, if it left up to me, these beer places and these liquor joints would go out of business. Amen. I'm not great. But he took it away from me. He took it. He took it. I've never got drunk again or touched a drug. And I'm now married. I have spent this last year mostly in regret and sorrow. But I feel it is a process. There is joy that God would want to save a sinner like me. Amen. 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 I witnessed to this. I've never met this lady, but I witnessed to what she says. Now listen to this. She says, I have always regretted murdering my babies. She didn't say how many in the plural. We don't know how many she had. Murdering them. Have you ever seen the feminist movement and this crowd that's marching up and screaming in the streets to kill babies? Have you ever, heard, have you ever, have you ever seen any of them just simply ask, well, how have you dealt with it since you killed your baby? You ever seen that? No, you're not going to see that. Did you know that there are people in this country that have committed suicide? They just couldn't bear it that they killed their baby. They committed suicide. They couldn't take it. They couldn't stand it. They'll think about that the rest of her life. She'll think about the little, little children that died. Now, in Uvalde, Texas, little 10-year-olds were shot to death by a monster. Lord God Almighty. They went to heaven. They went to heaven, no doubt about it. But folks, there are little babies there in the mother's womb that are being shot to death too. Yes. Just in a different manner. When I first came to Temple, I had about five different ways they commit abort. They, they do abortion. They didn't have partial birth back then. And I posted it on the board out here in the, in the foyer. And I guess it stayed out there for six months, seven months. And somebody finally came to me and said, Preacher, would you please take that down? See, what I showed them was body parts in the blood, in the gore that goes along with abortion. Not a glob, but body parts, little legs, little arms, heads, you know, and all that. Oh. <laughs> but anyway, she said, uh, she said, I've always regretted murdering my babies. There isn't a day goes by that I don't think about it and grieve for them. I wish I had someone back then to tell me it is wrong and give me the right support. God bless your soul. But he still saved her. That's what you need to understand. You may be watching this. You may watch this later. You've committed that. You've killed your babies. You bought into the lie of this culture in America. Bought into it. Head and shoulders. And now it's eating the inside of you. Well, I'm going to tell you something. The Lord saved her, and he can save you. Amen. He can save. He's able to save to the uttermost all that come to God by him. The Supreme Court hopefully will return to the states the decision on abortion. Right? Now, if it's left up to me, they would cease. 
But you see, this is the issue, as we understand it, before the Supreme Court. And that is that they will no longer rule on abortions. They send it to the states. That's the way it should be, folks. The United States of America, the states have authority and power and should have. A governor governs his state. Yes, he does. He governs it. This is why a lot of times a governor is one of the best candidates you can get for the president because he has, he has, he has experience governing, dealing with the issues, seeing what it takes. So the Supreme Court's going to return to the states. You would believe that the court is going to outlaw abortion to hear them tell it. They're rabid, screaming monsters in the street. A few years ago they met, and I got these two Cretans holding a sign that says, if Mary had had an abortion, we wouldn't be in this mess. Think it through now. Think it through. You say anything they don't like and you offend them. It's hate speech. Mm -hmm. Define the terminology. Define it. They define it. They don't let you define anything. They define it. And so, and they were all, they were so happy. Boy, they were, had their tongues out. I mean, if Mary had had an abortion, we wouldn't be in this mess. Let me ask you a question. What mess did the death of Christ ever put you in? It didn't put you in a mess. It's the best thing ever happened for us. There's been so much change in me in my life in the last year that only the power of the true living God can do that. I give glory to him every day. I also give you thanks. Now for your sermons, and I know that my heavenly Father has guided me to watch you to learn. So if you want to help anyone with my testimony, please do so. If you ever need more or want to contact me to help others in similar situations, then please contact me too. Praise the Lord and thank you. That sounds like a saved person. That sounds like somebody that has regrets because her soul now has been set on fire. She has an entirely different perspective. She sees things as God sees them, and the Holy Spirit has moved into, their, into her life. She's been born again. She's become a new creature in Christ Jesus. Her worldview has changed, and she knows the difference between religion, hypocrisy, and the true faith in Christ. And that's why they hate us. That's why they hate us. That's why they hate us. They always will. I'm a preacher of hate. I'm a preacher of hate. Uh, my, my time has passed. I should have died in 1950. And I don't belong to this generation. People are free now. And they're in, they, they enjoy what they're doing so much. And so why don't you just shut up and leave them alone? That's the message. Let me tell you something. God Almighty is coming back to this earth. Amen. He's coming again. Amen. He's coming again. Yes, he amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen. It's been a long time since I've had anything really move me, stirred my soul like those little children that got killed out there. Oh, man. And I've prayed a lot for the families. I've prayed for the families. There was one man, his uh, wife was a school teacher. She was a school teacher. Two school teachers died trying to protect their children. You don't become a better school teacher than that. They proved it by their life that they love their kids. And so they died. Well, the husband of one of those school teachers went through mourning for her. He mourned and went to her grave and carried flowers and all that or to a, to a monument or something before she was buried, whatever. But he couldn't stand it. He had been that morning and he went home and he was dead in no time. And the family said he died from a broken heart. Well, who am I to say he didn't? And he did, he's gone. And you see, this won't get over, they're not gonna, they're not, it's not gonna be over overnight. Now here's a simple question to ask you. Would you, somebody give me the answer. I went to rural high school, graduated in 64, in, uh, in, uh, and uh, never, 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 ever one time did we have any mass shootings 
like it's going on all the time today. How come? What's changed? What's changed? What did they do? Took God out, didn't they? They took God out. Well, when they took God out, what happened? Satan moved in. That's what he said. I'm saying it's demonic. That's what I'm saying. And they want to make your children just like them. They want your kids. That's right. About the worst thing we had in, in school was uh, throwing paper wads at the girls and pulling their hair. Oh, Lord, have mercy, man. I'm telling you that right now. Oh, they'd put us away for some of the things that happened back then. You know, stuff like that. I mean, boys liked the girls back then. Is that a bad thing or a good thing? As a matter of fact, I left out of school one day, and these two guys were out in the front, and I knew both of them, and there was a crowd gathered around, and they were duking it out, man. I mean, they were beating on each other, and they weren't beating on each other who got in line first in the cafeteria. You know what they were beating on each other about? A girl. That's refreshing. <laughs> it is. That's inspiring. Love it. <laughs> They didn't hate each other. They were just fighting over that girl. You leave my girl. She's my girl. Leave her alone. No, no, no. She's my girl. Okay. And I like the girl because I don't know who she was, but she could have been standing over here like this, <laughs> taking it all in. Yeah, yeah. That's the world I grew up in. <laughs> if, you somebody saw, if you saw two people holding hands walking down the aisle, guess what? It was a boy and a girl. Amen. Boy and a girl. If you went in the bathroom... You never had to worry about a girl going into the men's bathroom or a man going into the girl's bathroom. Had he done that, he would have been drug out into the hall and you know what would have happened. Yes, sir. Never even thought of it. That's the kind of world I grew up in. It's gone crazy, folks. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's insane. It's insane. It's insane. You cannot talk to mad people. They're insane. You can't deal with them. Satan has, he has, he has, he has burned their mind out and they've completely sold themselves over to Satan. Amen. If you know the Lord Jesus, thank him because you know him. Amen. Thank him because you know him. Amen. Thank him because you know him. Amen. 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 He said, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'm a whosoever preacher. I believe in whosoever will. Christ tasted death for every man. Every one of us. Every last one of us. You mean preacher, he tasted death for the murderer? Yes. For the abortionist? Yes. Homosexual? Yes. Whatever. Whatever. He died for all men. Father, bless your word tonight. Thank you for the testimony of this dear soul over in England. Thank you for her testimony and thank you Heavenly Father you've saved her. She's got a good home now, the husband and Father bless her, bless her. Use this testimony she sent. I gave tonight, maybe somebody, will, somebody heard it. Man, no tell them when they'll hear it. They may hear it later, but I pray that they listen with their heart, not their head. Listen to their, with their heart about what you did for this lady. And you can, and, and as she said in her testimony, all the stuff that eats us up, she was forgiven for. Thank God for that. In your name I pray, amen. Brother, stand up tonight. What we got? Page 403.